Divergence is a number that tells us by how much things tend to flow away from a point. Note that I've used the word things. I want to emphasize the fact that though divergence is particularly understood in regards with fluid flow, it can be used in numerous places where there is no actual flow of physical particles. We calculate divergence with these two fancy terms here. Partial of P with respect to X and partial of Q with respect to Y, where P and Q are the X and Y components of a two-dimensional vector field. So how do these two terms tell us what we need? First of all, let's look at some examples to get a good grip of the meaning of the word divergence. Consider this field. I have associated with each point a particle. Concentrate on the density of these particles within the yellow circle as they move. As time passes, the density of these particles decrease, which implies that the particles tend to flow away from the point than towards it, corresponding to a positive value of divergence. Look at this case. Again, note the density of the particles inside the yellow circle. In this case, they don't seem to change, implying zero divergence. Similarly, look at this case. In this case, particles tend to flow into the circle than out of it, implying a negative divergence. Now, consider a field that contains only X component. In other words, particles cannot flow up or down. As we did before, concentrate on the yellow circle. As the density decreases, we conclude that we have a positive divergence. One interesting thing to note here is when we observe the values of x component of the field, p, as we take tiny energies along the x direction, they tend to increase, implying a positive partial derivative of p with respect to x. Consider another similar field. Again, looking at the density decrease, we conclude that we have a positive divergence. Even here, when we observe the values of x component of the field P, as we take tiny energies along the x direction, the magnitude of x component becomes less negative, implying a positive partial derivative of P with respect to x. Therefore, we can conclude that when the vector field under consideration contains only x component, its divergence is given by the partial derivative of p with respect to x. If this number is negative, then that implies that particles tend to flow towards the point than away from it. Similarly, consider a vector field which contains only the y component, meaning there is no lateral flow. We apply the same logic here, that is, looking at the density, we conclude that the divergence is positive. Again, when we look at Q values as we take tiny energies along Y direction, it increases, corresponding to a positive partial derivative of Q with respect to Y. As we did before, look at this very similar field. Again, it can be noted that the Q values become less negative, corresponding to a positive partial derivative of Q with respect to Y.
Therefore, we can conclude that when the vector field under consideration contains only the y component, its divergence is given by the partial derivative of q with respect to y. As before, if this number is negative, it implies that particles tend to flow towards the point than away from it. Now, with these two results, we can calculate the divergence of any field. Why? Since any two-dimensional vector field is made up of two components, P and Q, it can be split into its component fields. The divergence of any vector field is just the sum of the divergences of the x component field and y component field. I am just making up these words like x and y component fields, but you get the point, right? And voila, there is the result. The divergence of A is equal to the sum of partial derivative of P with respect to x and partial derivative of Q with respect to y.